episode of Science Talk Show presented by Times of Biotech. Today we have with us Dr. Daria Krobo, a chief executive of DC Sky Art. She loves to make science memorable with her unique expertise of blending science with art. Hello, Daria. Welcome to the show. Hello, Sylvain. Thanks a lot for inviting me. It's a pleasure. Thank you so much for accepting the invitations. Okay, so to start with, I would like to ask, and as I know, like you have done PhD in plant biology, and then you choose a career of being entrepreneur. So how and why did you turn up your journey from a plant biologist to entrepreneur? Um, it is. Uh, it was um, during my PhD when I realized uh, I did my PhD in plant physiology and in, in Sweden, and it's usually five years. And around the half time of my PhD, I realized uh, the academic field is not really uh, where I feel best at, and I don't. I couldn't see myself in it. And at the same time, I realized. Yeah. Um, yes, I, I like to do illustrations. So whenever I had to write a paper or write some kind of report or make a post, I really like to illustrate my figures. And uh, then like people started seeing it, they started approaching me and asked me if I could help them with figures. So I decided actually, maybe I could do this after my PhD. Then I just start my own company and become a scientific illustrator. Uh, and that was basically, you know, that was, when you have this, when I had these doubts of mm -hmm. like, I don't feel right here, I don't want to continue this classical academic path, having like a night, another idea that, you know, pushes uh, forward and gives extra motivation to finish and to work for what I actually wanted to do. So how did you started your startup in illustration? Was it a difficult or like it was a, just a piece of cake for you since you was already wanted to be illustrator? No, not piece of cake <laughs> at all because I I mean I I have only studied biology did my PhD in biology so I had no idea about economy like entrepreneurship marketing PR taxes all of these things no idea and these were also my biggest fears that will I actually manage yeah. um, but it was I was lucky because after my um, after I finished my uh, PhD I got a job coach um, so I talked with her a lot about it and I said, I would like to do this. And she helped me with a business plan, with budgeting. She, you know, like guided me a little bit. And then I, that I have done all this like um, paperwork bureaucracy here in Sweden. It's quite easy to start a company. They're very mm -hmm. entrepreneur friendly. Actually, they mm -hmm. support a lot tax wow. office, all kinds of organizations. So I went to little courses in business and um, did little things here and there. And then. I also got into a startup incubator. So mm -hmm. it's basically an organization that collects different types of startups. In my okay. case, it was from the creative industry. So they could be musicians, illustrators, interior mm -hmm. designers. Mm -hmm. And we had job coaches there as well and seminars and workshops. They would invite people from marketing, from sales that would teach us things. So like mm -hmm. this, I like started my company at the same time I was part of the incubator and learned these things on the go. So it was like, it was, I mean, it was not, I mean, it was different from what I usually, you know, knew studying and learning. But when you do a PhD, we learn to learn. We learn yeah. to solve problems. We learn to ask questions. And that was the same thing you applied. Okay, I don't know how to do this. How do I solve it? I do this. Uh, or you ask people that know, and they tell you, try this, A, B, C. And then you try it and one works, the other not. And then you can continue so it's um, the same principles can be applied actually okay so I felt. yeah even though not directly indirectly your phd helped you uh, for being an entrepreneur yes and also like you you know you fail so many times during the phd and you can also fail in what starting a company and you have challenges all the time in the phd you have challenges mm -hmm. all the time starting a company so you kind of get used to it. <laughs> so yeah. you just apply the same again. <laughs> okay, so you are challenge solving problem, like challenge solving attitude actually help you to building this illustration business of yours. Okay, so let's talk about how, how, how and why this illustration is really important in science. Um, it is because, um, oh, okay, where to start? Uh, I mean, personally, for me, uh, when I used to uh, read papers, 
it's, mm -hmm. I had a hard time reading papers with only text, 10, 15 pages. If I wouldn't have a visual mm -hmm. uh, my, that my brain could connect to, that I can visualize and remember better, I, I, I couldn't do it. It takes a lot of energy for me to read and understand. Okay. So when you have something visual, it makes it easier to learn and to mm -hmm. reproduce and to understand and to remember. Um, and that's like, I mean, if you imagine like babies learn as well, like with pictures, Yes, they right. they don't know how to write and to read, but they know what a stick figure is. It's a person. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't have to be fancy, but this basic like drawing or basic illustrations, they already help tremendously. And science mm -hmm. often is super complicated. So yeah, you know, to make it easier with an illustration to make the reader or potential collaborator or somebody who wants to work with you or wants to do a PhD in your group to make them understand what you do better, uh, easier. And then mm -hmm. it's 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 not only for papers it's for grants it's for outreach it's for all kinds of like graphical abstracts are needed P people want visualizations to be you know to they also like mm, they bring attention uh, so people immediately look at them instead of like five pages of text oh my god like <laughs> yeah. i know it for myself and not only for myself but also from friends and colleagues like it's a mm -hmm. pain sometimes to read through text but if you see something and read then it's best to combine these two senses, basically. Actually, you are using all your senses, visual, yes. reading, everything. So basically it makes the work a lot easier, you're saying. Uh, I think so, easier, um, easier to understand, to remember, to follow, to share. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's uh, like, um, yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't use as, as much energy um, to understand an illustration with additional text and reading only text, it, um, it you wow. and you know doing a PhD or being a PI or a researcher, you have tons of things to do. You need mm -hmm. your brain all the time. The brain is constantly on, you know, on fire and working and doing and thinking and analyzing and la la la. So then, why not to like release it a bit? Look at the pretty, yeah. you know, illustration. Oh, I get it. You know, mm -hmm. so you can, you know, it's a little bit easier for the brain. Yeah. I feel. <laughs> Okay, so a lot of people must be coming to you. They are the scientists, the professors, and they must be asking you to draw according to them. So what are the common points which we have noticed? Like the, when people come to you, they ask for the same things over and over again or something like that, which is actually makes you, helps you to illustrate their ideas on the paper. Um, that's a difficult question because uh, I, m most of the time, because I'm a plant biologist, people come to me being plant biologists. Okay. So often I draw like plant cells, for example, or organelles. Um, so these are similar, but mm -hmm. some, or like or trees or certain plant species, or mm -hmm. little molecular mechanisms, photosynthesis, these things are similar, but actually every project is super different because yeah. everybody, every scientist really works on something very specific and that's super tiny sometimes or sometimes really big in general that it can't compare to somebody else then they want it maybe for a grant um, then it should look different than for a publication mm -hmm. or they want um, like a different style some want it very you know like colorful others want black and white so it's actually super different okay. <laughs> I, I can't there's not one thing that always comes but the thing that always comes up is you know, the people need help because none of them can do it. So, okay. so it's okay, like help me. Like they are super grateful. So it's, um, um, that's, that's a big plus. And it seems like for them, it's helpful to talk to me as a scientist as well, because I ask them questions that they might have not thought about. Or well, for oh. me to understand what they mean, mm -hmm. I ask things and they have to start thinking differently. And they think differently in, because they will have to explain to me what they want to show, how, and they have usually mm -hmm. never thought much about it, how to display it best, you know? And then when I ask certain things, it might change the way something is illustrated because of, you know, clarity, for example. Mm -hmm. So this is often actually um, something that many customers uh, realize. Okay, so you are not, a, are you planning to take the illustration jobs other than the plant biologist? like for example, biotechnology molecular or something like that? Yes, yes, I do that. I do molecular things. I do stuff for um, companies as well that do some kind of biotechnology uh, mm -hmm. related 
uh, subjects. Recently, I've done something on um, on a company that produces breast milk formula. I have oh. done an illustration on like um, prostate cancer as well. So it, it actually, I'm not limited to plant sciences, but this is my network and this is what I show. So I think people from plant sciences or agriculture come more likely to me, but there is these exceptions, you know, from the human uh, medical science mm -hmm. as well. So it can be okay. anything. Okay. Uh, something different from what I, we were talking, talking so far. So yeah, I've seen your academic journey. It is like a, you have done your academic journey from the various countries. So what was mm -hmm. your experience of moving out to other country, doing your studies? And what was the all experiences and uh, did they actually help with your career? I, I'm sure about that. <laughs> um, so they definitely helped. I, I did my bachelor and master of science in Germany. Then I went for half a year to the US uh, and I worked there in a lab before I worked with Arabidopsis. Okay. And then I worked with tomato in, mm -hmm. uh, in the US. And then I went to Sweden um, to work on Arabidopsis again. Um, so my studies in Germany, well, I have to say, um, how to say, I'm one of the most painful things for me during studies were exams. I really am not a good exam person. So I can't memorize and write okay. things down exactly what it should be, you know. I would usually be really good at the practical parts, but the exams, the theory behind, it was very <laughs> difficult for me. Um, but uh, then my master thesis working in the lab, bachelor thesis, and then working in the lab in the US, that, that really like showed me um, mm -hmm. you know, it's super important, not only the theory, I still knew the theory, I just sucked at exams, uh, <laughs> but it's really, it's really important to practically also be able to do things. And I learned when I only, first time that I went to a lab and did a like internship, I was like, oh my God, now I understand everything. Now it all makes sense, you know, because you actually stand in the lab, do mm -hmm. a PCR, a do a Western blood. Yeah. And it's not only theory that you learn before. So that helped a lot. And um in general, like, um, yes, I really liked my stay in the US. Uh, I was there for six months. And then in Sweden, you see a little bit of different work cultures um, mm -hmm. and in all the countries, but it's, um, well, it's, I, I enjoyed it. I usually, you know, often it's, oh, I saw it as well that um, many scientists, researchers, they work like 24 seven all the time nonstop and many young people think they have to work like all the time be in the lab the whole day and all the weekends I know I have in my life done these things I've studied I've worked I've done this this and then I kind of like mm -hmm. not burned out but I reached my limits so I decided I'm not going to do this for my PhD and when coming to Sweden I also I told my bosses that mm -hmm. I would like to have a good work life balance and mm -hmm. that's very valued in Sweden in general so oh. I told them I, I want to work a lot when needed, but I don't want to come on the weekends, for example. I need the break. Um, yeah. And they accepted it. And I was one of the few PhD students that did not regularly come on the weekend. If I had to take care of my plants or sample, I would still do it. And I sometimes work 10 hours or deadlines or papers, you know, I do these things. But it was not like demanded from me. Mm -hmm. um, even though my surrounding, of course, people would still do it. But um I, I really appreciated it that I could actually take time and it, uh, it was it was okay that's a good yeah. thing that I you can enjoyed. be your own boss yeah in a way even though I didn't have the feeling I was my own boss in the <laughs> PhD only now <laughs> and that was one of the reasons because I felt I do this PhD for myself but mm -hmm. I don't have so much to decide you know others decide and it's not like I don't I didn't feel that I have so much control over my PhD while now like I can, it, it's perfect. It, it fits me better. Yeah, you are loving what you are doing. Yes, <laughs> a lot. And that, and that is the main thing you should have in your work career. And I think yes. you used a unique uh, way of uh, doing a career, like uh, first of all, entrepreneur and that too in a really different uh, sector. Like hardly people think about all these things. And maybe I think these are the uniqueness coming out with the modern life and the, innovations you can say is yeah. it yeah so yeah for sure many people don't even know that people like me exist you know so it's yeah uh, they don't know that they can get help with illustrations or 
like uh, PowerPoint slides or presentations or posters. They have no idea. Mm -hmm. And then they find out and then they are super grateful. And it's also something that I really like people being so grateful for me yeah. helping them. And I love to help them. So it's a win, win, win. <laughs> yeah. It's a kind of blooming thing because if you uh, pick up some papers of 10 years back, you won't hardly you will see any illustrators. But now every paper has some or the other things to illustrate. And obviously yes. it's helping. So of course it's blooming for you. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, there is so much like, there's still not so many people doing it, you know? So there's so much possibility. I've sometimes people approach me like, oh, I also like this, but I don't know. And should I, shouldn't I? I always tell them like, there's tons of people. There's tons of potential customers. You, you can, anybody in the scientific field needs visuals. So do it. <laughs> Wow, it was really a pleasure talking to you because I need to understand the a different perspective of today's world, like the modern in modernization and the illustration for, for the most. And there will be many people who might not be knowing, but now they will know since you told them like, yes, people like you exist and then you can get a lot of help from people like you. So this was really nice having on your show and thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you very much for inviting me again. It was a pleasure to talk and share and uh, I hope it will be of value. Yes, uh, definitely will be of value. Thank you so much. Thanks.